escaping the realm of darkness. The paranormal guys are on a quest to find the answers to the hard questions of where the normal meets the paranormal and the weird and where the natural meets the unnatural. So grab your holy water, call your mama, and get ready for it. The Paranormal Guys Podcast. Oh, hello everybody, and hello everybody here at Dark Matters today. Is everybody having a good time? Can I get everybody to say, oh hell yeah. Oh hell yeah. Today's date is February 4th. This will be broadcasted from its live interview tonight to February 23rd on our Paranormal Guys podcast. Steve, how's everything going? Everything's good. It's really cool to be here tonight. Yes, it is. I love it. I love it. I want to thank, first off, I want to thank Pat in the back doing the audio for us. That's always a great Thank you, Pat. Pat does a great job. I want to thank Side Street Studios for helping us today. I want to thank you, the audience out there, for being out here today. Steve, what's new and different in your world? Well, I mean, we're here tonight, and that is super cool because usually I am uh, in front of a green screen. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> and, are. And um, having a, a few uh, sips of my favorite beverage, which I'm not tonight. No, you're not. Uh, no. <laughs> no, you're not. But you know what? There's always when you get home, my friend. And there's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> when I wake 8 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning, got to have that bright eye. Yeah. Memo yeah. says. I'm talking yeah. about coffee, everybody. I'm talking, talking about coffee. coffee. I'm talking about five hour energy. Oh. Liquid cocaine, my friend. Cocaine now. Yes, sir, <laughs> sir. All right, well, it's going to take us right into our news. Roll it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be a little bit different than our news. You, the audience, is going to decide between two stories, what's true and what's false. I will do the first, Steve will do the second, and then you shall decide for yourself, and we'll ask you in the end. All right, December 26, 2022, a young girl asked the police to run a DNA test on a partially eaten cookie, and carrot remains presumably consumed by Santa Claus himself and some of his nine reindeer on Christmas Eve. The food remains were reported to the State Department of Health Forensic Sciences Unit for analysis, the police said. Now the follow-up article to that <laughs> after that happened. July, January 24th, Cumberland. The Rhode Island Department of Health says it was not able to definitely confirm or refute the presence of Santa. In a young girl's home after she requested have a partially eaten cookie and a couple of gnawed on carrot sticks. They were tested for DNA to see if Santa Claus is real. Who believes in Santa? Who, I, I believe in Santa. <laughs> the department tweeted on Monday, we all agree that something magical may be at play. The department said it found out no complete matches to anyone in the combined DNA index system, but said there was a partial match to a 1947 case centered around 34th Street in New York City. <laughs> Anybody ever hear about that? Yeah, the good news is the lab did find the presence of DNA closely matching Rangifer Tarandis, known as reindeer. Yeah. Reindeer DNA? Reindeer DNA? I didn't even know that existed, man. How do you even get that? Well, well let's certain continue. rituals. Well, certain rituals. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, I won't All go right. <laughs> When testing the carrots, that's how they got it, the department said. The girl, a Cumberland resident, had sent the cookie and the carrot sticks to the town's police department to ask if they could be tested for DNA. Chief Matthew Benson said on Friday, Benson forwarded the evidence to the State Department of Health Forensic Science Unit for analysis. So could there really be a Santa Claus? And does he have eight tiny reindeer? Well, in the end, boys and girls, you're going to decide if this is a true or false story. So Steve to you and your news article. Well, I will read that, but um, do you think Santa, if he exists, would do 23 and Me? And if he did, <laughs> and if he did, would, would you be surprised if they said, uh, Neil, we found your father? Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> and what kind of cookie was it, Neil? I believe it was uh, chocolate chip. Was it chip. a magic cookie or? You never ever know, Michelle. Oh, right. Magic reindeer, magic cookie. That's magic right. cookie. All right, well, here's my news, and mine is true. <laughs> January 15th, 2023, in the small town of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, a 10-year-old boy named Tommy 
has been experiencing strange and frightening events in his home. According to local sources, Tommy has been claiming that a haunted doll he received as a gift has been terrorizing him at night. Tommy's parents initially brushed off the claims, believing it was just an overactive imagination. However, they soon realized the situation was much more serious when they began to hear strange noises coming from Tommy's room mm. and saw furniture move on its own. Damn. The doll in question is a vintage porcelain figurine with beady black eyes and a creepy smile. According to legend, the doll was once owned by a wealthy family in the late 19th century, but was sold at an estate sale after it was discovered to be cursed. Despite attempts to get rid of the doll, it keeps reappearing in Tommy's room. Causing even more disturbances, the town has been buzzing with rumors of the haunted doll, and many are now too scared to enter the house. The family has reached out to the paranormal investigators who have confirmed the presence of a dark entity attached to the doll. The situation is ongoing, and the town is on edge as they wait, wait for resolution. Wow. Wow. Can I get a wow? Wow. Wow, man. All right, so you, the audience. You, that's, yeah, that's a, <laughs> so, so you, the audience, who agrees that the Santa story is real? Raise your hand. All right. Santa Claus. He's in all our hearts. All right. Who likes and believes that Haunted, hit, doll. haunted doll is true? Yeah. Well, well, the winner is my story is a true story. Santa does exist, man. Now, just as a little uh, a tidbit, um, Neil and I were looking for news stories, and uh, we couldn't find a lot of really good odd ones. So I typed into OpenAI G Chat GPT. I said, "Write me a story. Write me a fake news story yep. about a haunted doll in Rhode Island." <laughs> and uh, two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. It, it wrote that out. entire article. I was like, "Oh my god!" So many people are going to be out of work. Yeah. Even even us. You know, the there's, a, I, yeah. there's, there's a writer a lot of script sitting writers to your out there left. are going to be out of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary, but um. It's amazing, yeah. and, and you know the AI. That AI, because we we on some of our little commercials that we do, we have uh, uh, like Betty's going to be um, Betty White. <laughs> no, it's is not going Betty to be White. But her name's Betty. We her can't have Betty. Betty. <laughs> She's going to be uh, doing our uh, little uh, thing of like YouTube channel. So you're able to put that AI voice inside there. It's an amazing thing. You know, I just wish I could get one of the Ghostbusters in there to do that. And we'll do it. I'm I'm actually working on uh, recreating your voice, Neil. Oh dear Lord. That way I don't need you anymore. All right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, we are pressed for time today, so we are going to carry on. We are going to be talking about demons and exorcism today. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> demons described as an inhuman or an evil spirit. They cause harm, distress, or ruin to the one that they possess. When we let our personal defenses down, can these demons walk right into our lives? Well, Bishop Rake holds a master's degree in theology and scripture in Andover Newton Theolo Theological Seminary, she is with us tonight. A current leader of the American Apostolic, Apostolic Catholic Church, I, pro I apologize, <laughs> and author, <laughs> pronunciation is not my best thing, sorry. Paranormal, in her book, Paranormal Mediums, Ghosts, and Afterlife in the Bible. Bishop Rake, thank you very much for coming on. Just so you know, afterwards, she has a book, very good book, if you wish to come up and purchase that book. She will also sign it. Am I right about that? Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our first question, Bishop. What is a demonologist, and is it the same as an exorcist? Okay. And... I wanted this asked because the paranormal realm has kind of switched, and by paranormal I mean like television paranormal, <laughs> has switched meanings from what things were historically. Because a, a demonologist is someone who studies the history of the idea of evil and how it's evolved between cultures and religions from a course I teach from ancient Babylon and Sumer up through different religions to the modern day, including medieval occult, Greek philosophy, and stuff like that. So a demonologist, is an, that's an actual academic discipline. People write PhD dissertations, unlike the demonology of William of Malmesbury or 
who's a friend of mine from the 13th century, uh, <laughs> or, or Egyptian uh, deities that then connected to occult demons. Like Osiris. Yeah, right. it's, it's, it's an actual knowledge-based academic discipline that mm -hmm. I've been involved in in years. Um, an exorcist in the Middle Ages was anybody who could control a demon, whether they conjured the demon, and believe it or not, the Roman Catholic Church was <laughs> initially, they were the people who got into the occult and theurgy through Greek philosophy, but an exorcist is anyone who can control a demonic entity. And when I'm using the word demon, I want everybody to understand, people use different words for this, um, I'm not a religionist. I have more in common with our satanic friends than your average evangelical. Yeah! <laughs> so, much more in common. So um, when I talk about that, these are just uh, negative spiritual ent entities. I think of things through the matrix of, of science and quantum physics and neuropsychology. So I'm using that term other people may use different terms. Uh, but a demonologist is anybody who studies demonology. An exorcist is someone who either deals with some kind of spiritual attachment, whatever you may call it, a negative attachment, um, and who controls it by either expelling it or, in the Middle Ages, calling it down. <laughs> so. Okay. Steve? So where did the idea of demonic entities like really come from, um, and how far back? Does that go across like cultures and different, um, and just history in general? This is, this is the cool thing, mm -hmm. okay? People think that religion invented evil, mm -hmm. but evil is the reason that religion developed. Because people looked around and they were like, all right, life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, it's painful, it's short, and why? And the first answer that developed uh, 80,000 um, 80, BC mm. in Neanderthals and, and, and evidence that there was an afterlife in the graves because they were giving perfectly good items, burying them, indicating a belief in an afterlife, was that there were deities controlling things. And in ancient cultures, demons weren't necessarily evil. All gods were good and evil. Mm -hmm and you had to keep them happy so they were nice to you. For example, um, the demon Pazuzu, that is the demon in yeah, the book. <laughs> oh dear Lord. <laughs> that, yes, it's the demon that possesses Reagan in the movie The Exorcist. Right. However, in the Mesopotamian hell tablet, in Babylonian culture, Pazuzu was married to Lamishtu, or Lilu in Akkadian, or Lilith uh -huh. in Hebrew, and on the Mesopotamian hell tablet, Pazuzu is helping exorcists whip his own wife out of a possessed person. So these entities were never fully evil, never fully good. It was only through what we call syncretism or the sharing among religions of deities like trading cards. It's like, I'll, I'll trade you two Liliths for a, for <laughs> an Abaddon, or Abaddon, so as it's So Pokemon came out a little early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> so get back to Lilith. Mm -hmm. Now, was it that Lilith was actually the first wife of Adam? That was the Jewish story regarding right. Lilith. Right, and that supposedly they had a falling out, and she went off into the woods, where then she started meeting demons. And, uh, there are lots them. of different interpretations of that. Mm -hmm. If you do a feminist interpretation, she's mm -hmm. kind of pissy at Adam. Yeah. For like, I'm friends with God. <laughs> 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 so um, I got connections, man. <laughs> and she but, didn't come from like a rib either, right? She's her own no, woman. No, she was. She came from there the are, soil. There are two different <laughs> Genesis stories. There is chapter one in which man and women were created equally and at once, and the rabbis who did interpretations of Genesis, called Midrash, <laughs> said that man and woman were actually one entity, like Siamese twins, like two gingerbread cookies baked together. And that it was the, the fall or the separate, I call it the divorce, 
from God, because I hate fall original sin, but the divorce from God, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting applause from the Satanists. Yeah. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. I think I the next thing this. I'm going to say, they're going to really applaud. No, I seriously <laughs> love this, but that was, that was um, what they believed. And then there's the older chapter three. And in chapter three, um, Eve is made from Adam's rib. So, and she's actually his third wife. According to what? Jewish Midrash, Third? there's a second wife oh. who was. Does he owe anything? Well, <laughs> the alimony yeah, payments yeah, were out. Alimony payments. Um, but the second wife was created in front of Adam's eyes, and he was so grossed out he wouldn't touch her. So that's why he was put to sleep for the third one, which was Eve. <laughs> now, Lilith wow. is also believed to be a succubus. I'm sure my man right over here would really. You, know. you guys want to roll? You want to cross the <laughs> so is that is that true is that uh the, the succubus is based off of lilith um no no not um, at all not based off of you have to understand as these these concepts entered christianity because there were no succubi or concepts like that in the in first century christianity those came in later mm -hmm. as um christianity met other faiths like boga mills and gypsy faiths and in, in, in the Byzantine Empire. But um, she was then recast as a succubus. Right. So, but she was, for the Jewish people, the demon of the night who um, wounded people. Well, it depends, you know. Depends Not on woman your of the night, demon of the night. So it's a little different. Um, but. <laughs> But she would injure children in childbirth. And so remember, for, for religion, you know, at the time in, the ancient, in ancient cultures, the big boogeyman was, you know, infant mortality. And so there had to be a reason why all these children were dying. And it's not because one guy would deliver six babies without washing his hands. It was because of demons. Um, so... What do you think about demonology and the way it is portrayed today on TV and all throughout media? It fucking sucks. Yeah? Oh, wow. Um, Please elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, honestly, I, I think that um, it's interesting and things get blown. I mean, I, I, I love... Um, the show, I mean, uh, yeah. the Conjuring movies. Everybody loves all those movies, but, you know, uh, me personally, I, I think it's when we start to let our defenses down that a lot of these things start to inhabit our lives. And as much as I love The Conjuring, The Nun, and stuff like that, I don't think it's, uh, it's to that elaboration of that wide scale of uh, this demon, like The Nun, like uh, Valak, and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the problem is that Hollywood um, divorces action and decision from consequence. So nobody has free will in those movies. You know, your, your, your free will is your absolute greatest gift, your power of decision, your ability Choice. to have an intention and co-create reality with perception. Mm -hmm. I mean, that the little gray matter in our brains that matrixes all of this, this is all illusory. If you could take your brain out of your head, you'd be surprised at how dark and silent and boring the world actually is. And that's neuroscience, that's not even philosophy. So that you have to understand that, that the way we perceive this and the way we perceive everything, it's all in here. Mm -hmm. And your ability to create your own reality through intention, belief and forgive me i hate using new age terms because my clergy's like what are you doing but it, it manifestation actually focusing purpose in your life is the greatest gift that we have it, it is the divine gift the intent choice. of the individual exactly and so if people are robbed of that free will in the movies and everything right it's, it's irritating to like me. i've explained to people about like uh, ouija boards and stuff like that or spirit boxes is the individual who goes into wanting to use these tools like a ouija board which is actually just a spirit board. If I go in there with the intent of wanting to do something evil, what do I get? I'm going to get evil. If I go in there because I want to go ahead and try to speak with some spirits or something like that, more like I'm going to uh, speak with some spirits, could some of the spirits be manipulative spirits? Yes. 
We've come across that in a lot of the investigations that we've come across, things that pretend to be something. Mm -hmm. But I believe intent is one of the major things uh, that happens with the individual for the action that's going to happen for the reaction. Absolutely, and then you add to that the, the power of manifestation just with, with inner trauma and with um, psychosomatism and the different ways in which our own interior pain can manifest itself out. I, I, I'm a writer, I, so I write things, so I, I think that there's power. Sure, oh, so I agree. Is Go that ahead, the, uh, the ability to like create an illness within you because of yes. your own focus? Yes, okay. and, and there are studies that are mind-blowingly accurate that we actually retain our trauma in our DNA and pass it on to our children, even mm -hmm. if they don't experience the same trauma, they some tend to recreate our symptoms, even if we've healed and had therapy and whatnot. So let's speak about trauma for a second. Steve, if you could pull up, uh, pull up uh, Annalise. Yeah. So this was a case, and uh, Bishop Rake is very well known about this case. Uh, this young lady right here, Annalise, Michael or Michelle? Mikkel. Mikkel, thank yeah. you. So this young lady here, they believed that she was possessed. The mother and father believed that she was possessed. Uh, she uh, suffered from mental illness. She, this, this um, as you can see, it just looks horrible right here. She died of malnutrition in the end. Right. My belief on it, and I'll let you go in on it, is that the beginning of this story was probably a problem where there was actual mental illness, okay? But we're getting right back into intent. So after some time, and these parents are believing with their heart and their soul and their religion that no matter what, I do not believe the doctors, we're not going to talk to doctors anymore, we're going to just talk to a priest, and we have a possession. So now I have intent to want to go, keep going ahead and moving along with an exorcism. And I constantly keep doing I think they did over something like 120? Uh, over the course of 19 months. Yeah, constantly. Now my belief is... Once again, intent. The more you keep doing this, even though it's mental illness, you play with something, you're going to get what you're looking for. So I believe in the end, even though it was mental illness in the beginning, I believe that some kind of form of possession did happen sometime down the line right before she did pass. I believe that we are open to these things. I believe that these things can enter into our lives. And I believe through the intent that was happening through these parents here, I believe in the end she was possessed and that's how she passed. What do you think? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's like this. I, I, no, Neil, like, go home. Should I, should I even tack on to that? I, I mean, she was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy. Right. Um, and first of all, it, it wasn't entirely her parents' fault. It, it was Rome's fault. Okay. Because at the mm -hmm. time, the Roman ritual said right in the beginning of the instruction for priests, and, and it's hard to find during this time period because exorcism had fallen so far out of favor, um, do not bring in medical experts. Mm -hmm. All right, it's, it's Rome's fault. I'm, I'm putting it at the feet of the church on that one. Okay. Um, but it, <laughs> I can't even look at that. It's just so heartbreaking. It is. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> um, Annalise McKell had actually asked the Blessed Virgin that she might be possessed, and there is a concept in Catholic theology and Roman theology, not in mine, but because um, I'm not Roman Catholic, I'm independent Catholic, um, in that theology of the victim soul mm -hmm. who requests possession as a form of suffering interiorly for the sins of the world. And it's believed that Mother Teresa did the same thing, and she was exercised by John Paul II. Yeah, she took on the idea that she should suffer. Mentally, she believed that she was taking on the world's uh, pain. Mm -hmm. And so she believed that this, mentally, she believed that uh, this should happen to her. Yeah. And that her suffering is for the world type of scenario. And if you want to talk about demonic, that's pretty much as demonic sure, an idea sure, that, as you yeah, can get. Yeah, I definitely. have to suffer for everybody else right, um, right. without proper boundaries. But, it, but with all these people praying over you um, and, and insisting you're possessed, at what point do we separate the entanglement of the interior and the exterior of the concept of an exterior spirit in an interior manifestation of whatever was going on inside of her? 
Yeah, I think that there is a meeting of the minds at some point where the exterior and the interior start to form a kind of uh, simpatico and just come together. So yeah, I think there were both going on. Yeah. The saddest thing is that the night she died, um, they had performed an exorcism. Her boyfriend Peter was there. The priests were there. Her parents were there. And her mother took her up to bed and Annalise McCall's last words were, Mama, don't leave me alone. And then she fell asleep and never woke up. Mm, wow. That's horrible. That's just horrible. You know, so, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, it's just, uh, it is horrible. And it, yeah, it's something that was intriguing, though. You mentioned that back, way back, 80,000 years ago, that um, there were stories about when people perceived. Um, entities that were um, spiritual or demonic, mm -hmm. um, maybe angelic, right? Mm -hmm. Godlike entities. They were a balance of uh, good and, and evil. They were, Not so much a balance, they were uh, indifferent. They were, a, okay, they, they had were both. indifferent. I'm talking about shamanic religion because okay. the first writings we have are from um, between 5,400 mm -hmm. BC in um, Akkadian and Sumerian. So that's the first written language. But previous to that, there is evidence of shamanic religions going back to Neanderthals because they use um, funerary totems, mm -hmm. uh, amulets and various things that people are buried with. And there is an actual academic term that is escaping me for those things. I, why can't we call them funerary totems? Why do theologians <laughs> have to have special words for everything? Mm -hmm. But anyway. Um, so they were buried with, with amulets okay. and uh, symbols and things. So we know that there was this concept of a payment for an afterlife or protection from a deity. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a concept called theophany when the point at which religion started to say the God, the big God, right. couldn't possibly be evil. So we need to drag the evil out of him and put it onto something else okay so. and that's kind of where i was going with the question yeah. is that at some point there became a dichotomy of this is good mm -hmm. and this is evil exactly and do this or mm -hmm. you'll be with that yeah <laughs> yeah with evil um and then it gets into like um you know judeo-christianity yeah right and where we talk about angels that are godly mm -hmm. and demons which are fallen right and now we've got that dichotomy it's not um, like a little bit of each in, in both of them. Yeah, it happened um, big time in what we call Second Temple Judaism, which was about um, 800 uh, BC up to the time of Christ. But before that, if you read older New Testament works, there's not even really a concept of an afterlife. Mm. It's, it's very basic. Um, but Religion evolves because human beings progress and grow and our, our thoughts become more complex. That doesn't mean that as we learn, things are made up. It means that our ability to delve into the complexity of a concept and to learn from great minds that come along generation after generation after, like in science, um, becomes better. Unfortunately, we also sometimes, through institutions, take giant leaps backward. <laughs> so, but for the most part, yeah, it, there was a point at which uh, Judaism said, nope, there is a total separation between these two concepts. Right. And it started happening before Judaism. It started happening in ancient Egypt, okay. uh, a little bit in Babylon, and Babylonian deities and, and demons. Um, and that's the point at which you started to see this separation between deities and deity and uh, that concept. Right, and there's similarities um, supposedly from mm -hmm. the uh, Christianity or Christian or Judeo, Judeo-Christian. Yeah. Reversing that. That's because the Satanists are here. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> 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 um, so what's the difference really between um, demons and angels from that perspective you know they're, um, they're kind of the same um there like are one fell and like what's really the deal there are that? two origin stories okay. in judaism for um negative entities or demons and the first the older one isn't even the one that everybody talks about now um the older one is that 
uh, angels mated with human women, right. and a race of giants was born, the Nephilim, in Hebrew, the fallen ones. But the fallen ones were so oppressive, and this is in the book of Enoch, and I believe the Apocalypse of Abraham. These are books that didn't make it into the Bible. Um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and in, the, in these books, what's recorded is that humanity was like, oh God, get rid of them, and that's why God sent the flood of Noah. And when the noetic flood killed all these Nephilim, their souls are what became demons. This was so pervasive that even the first Christians of the church, bishops, were fighting over whether it was this story, which is in the New Testament, it's mentioned by Paul, or it's this story, which was that there was a, um, a great angel and the argument about whether Lucifer was a order of angel of seraphim or cherubim didn't start until the ninth century, but um, that this Lucifer angel who was close to God um, rebelled. And the object of his rebellion isn't even spelled out in scripture. We get that story from John Milton <laughs> in Paradise Lost. Um, so, but that fall, he took a third of the host of heaven and they became demons. But an angel isn't a being, it's not a creature, it's an office. Like, I'm a bishop, all right? That's an office. I mean, I'm Christina Rake outside of that office, and there's another person who could become bishop of my office or judge. And that's what an angel is. Angelos or angelos is Greek. And it's a verb, being sent, one who is sent. So what demons are, are angels that no longer have their job, but they retain all of their essence, all of their abilities that angels have. So me personally, I think both stories are right. true. <laughs> I think everything's both and. All right, so right now we are going to do a little segment that we call Into the Shadows with Shell. Our Michelle Ward is going to do a poem for you. Attention all lost souls. It's time to get into the shadows with Shell. Scorched by Shell Ward. The demons do not want your body, for that is just a shell. Instead, they want to buy your soul and drag you straight to hell. They felt your pain and heard your cries on the loneliest of nights even on those sunny days when you thought your soul was tight. When all seemed lost and you screamed in vain and nothing you tried could take away the pain, he appeared out of nowhere, so tall and so pale, and took you into his arms and under his veil. With promises of money, desire, love and need, you didn't care that your lease was signed with greed. The money flourished, your desires and need grew more, but did you realize your life had ended when he walked through that door? There's a price to pay for fortune and fame. You can't escape the grasp of the devil's game. Your loved ones have left your company never to return. They watched your soul turn black, scorched from the burn. You danced with the devils and you had no regrets. But the song has ended, and you must pay your debts. You chose your fate, and now you must retreat to dance eternally with the demons in the fire and heat. Very good, Michelle. That is Miss Michelle Ward. Thank Excellent you. job, Thank you. as always. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so let's continue on. Exorcisms. Now, I've, I've come across people in my regular professional life or demons and exorcisms where I've had to deal with, and one of the things that I've noticed when I come up to certain individuals who I believe, I believe, might be possessed, there's a certain smell, 
<laughs> and it smells like a burnt rubber tire. Have you ever had that before? Yeah, and I, I've heard different people refer to it as burning trash, burning excrement, sulfur, sulfur you yeah. know. I think the sulfur's kind of played out. I kind of go with the bloated corpse myself. Yeah, this <laughs> the smell, yeah, the bloated corpse. It smells like burnt rubber to me. Now, I want to know, what are your experiences when you first came upon a possible demon inside someone, and how do you go through the steps of trying to do an exorcism? Well, I don't assess myself I okay. when someone comes to me and they're like I think I might be possessed I mean immediately I'm like you need to drive yourself to a neurologist and to a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and to a medical doctor and then you need to have your house examined for groundwater mm -hmm. for radon for EMF you know for all of those things because and thank you I think that that unfortunately there's so much um, uh, pop culture that's pervaded people and they're like I don't feel right mm -hmm. it's got to be externalized because that's easier and so many people will come to me and they're like well I don't practice a faith and, and no I don't do this or I don't do that but can you come do an exorcism and I'm like but it's not penicillin right <laughs> you know, no 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 your your choices affect your environment and your environment affects your psyche so, mm -hmm. so I have I I have to have all of this data to prove to me that there is no other. I mean, this person could have a brain tumor, right? Right. And here I am saying, "Well, I'll come perform an exorcism," and then three <laughs> weeks later, they can't see and they're dead. Right. I mean, that's on me. So we don't jump to the conclusion that someone is possessed. Absolutely okay. not. Okay. So, because like me and Steve, we we've, we've come across emails. We get we get voicemails a lot. And we get ladies, I recently had a lady, she called us, and she told me, oh, I've been staying up late at night, I got this incubus, and oh my God, the crazy things that were going through this, ladies. And don't get me wrong, that's where mental health, people have to go and talk to someone. There might be mental health that needs to be assessed. Like she said, there could be something inside someone's home. Like people don't realize that inside your house, certain things like you have an electrical junction box, if it's not sealed correctly, you start seeing things that aren't there. What that is, is that's uh, the power of the electricity coming out into your environment and you start hallucinating. Right. The so most, sometimes yeah. there can be certain things that be understood about what's going on. The most commonly prescribed um, antibiotic for a UTI urinary tract infection is Leviquin. Leviquin can cause psychosis and it causes auditory hallucinations. Oh, wow. And yet so many people are on it. Let me tell you something, some really funky shit happens to me when I'm not drinking cranberry juice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I TMI, have TMI. heard things calling to me from the bathroom and I'm like, you're on Leviquin, you're on Leviquin, you're on Leviquin, or I'm throwing holy water everywhere. Can you imagine if all the Roman priests <laughs> all had to go to all these ladies who have UTI infections. <laughs> I mean, how many priests would have to be utilized? I, I don't know. A whole know. damn lot, I'll a tell you that. A whole bunch of horrible jokes just oh. ran through my head. You know what? <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Okay. The we'll talk about that later. Pissed off. Yeah. Steve, Sorry. to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you've had experiences with mm -hmm. exorcisms, mm -hmm. right? Um, so... Can you tell us a little personal uh, experience or history of what got you interested in this? And, uh, you know, kind of, because if you went out and you had, you follow this demonology stuff, right? Like, I won't go near it. I'll, I'll do a podcast about it, <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't live this every day. I compartmentalize the paranormal. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, not yet. yet. No. Um, so it's very interesting, but like, for someone to go out and like make this their their job, right, their profession, I, I'm curious about your history, and then also I'm also a little curious about like one of the uh, most uh, interesting exorcisms you've done. Okay, it, where, where it was actually a demon. Do you know that <laughs> I have been an ordained clergy in the Independent Catholic Church since 2014? and I have not once had to use the Roman rite on a person. Really? No. I have performed uh, exorcisms of houses, but there's a difference between a demon and an unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. oh. I did perform a couple of exorcisms before I was ordained without knowing what 
the hell was happening. Right. Um, and I'll tell you that story. But um, for, uh, <laughs> all right, surprise, I'm also a psychic medium. And a, and a pretty heavily tested, well-known one. And um, my church runs an orphanage in Kenya, and I do readings for donations to the orphanage because it costs $500 a month to feed those kids, and I can't sleep at night when they can't eat. Um, and so as a child, I saw and heard things, and I knew things before mm -hmm. they happened. And I mean, to the point where my <laughs> my parents <laughs> would ask me, is that person lying? You know, come over here, <laughs> what, what's gonna happen? I swear to God, <laughs> and my husband's in politics and he calls me his secret weapon. So they take you, do they take you for car sales and stuff yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Christine, is he lying? But, um, <laughs> but because of that, I saw things and not all of them were human. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't categorize them because I wasn't raised in any religion. My father's family is Native American. We had a very naturalist outlook. And then um, my mother, she used to joke, well, I went to 12 years of Catholic school, but I'm okay now. Um, <laughs> so neither of them wanted Catholic. anything to do with this. And I was the weird kid who was like angels and demons and, and God and all this stuff that would happen to me. Um, but as a child, I had an experience that got me thinking about these things, and, and I was interested in the supernatural and the paranormal before them. Um, but at, I was eight years old, and I had a bunk bed, and I slept on the top bunk. And weird, thing, weird stuff happened in my house all the time. Someone had died there and stuff. Um, but one night I woke up because something hit me in the face and I, I woke up and <laughs> that wasn't uncommon unfortunately um, once I went and pummeled my brother because I thought it was him <laughs> so I, I wake up and I'm on my back and I'm like why do I feel like I'm in the boat we lived on the Jersey Shore and I look and I am in the air and I'm not falling yet but I'm in the air and then all of a sudden I got slammed into the dresser and, and I'm eight, but I got up and got back in bed and went back went to sleep. Went very back to bed, man. <laughs> I was just like, leave me the hell alone. I got to get some sleep. Well, it was a Tuesday night, you know. It, it was, was just a, school it was morning. an average Tuesday night. Um, and I woke up in the morning. I thought it was a nightmare. And I went into the bathroom, and I started screaming. It had dried blood all down oh, my yeah. face. It oh. had knocked out a tooth. Oh, no. Really? Yeah, oh. now I... I don't know what it was. I mean, I'm going to call it a demon because, you know, what great grandpa didn't do that to me. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, that really got me intrigued. But I was always pulled to religion. I believe I was born with a call. We're all born with a call, and it's the same call to love and serve each other, and I answered as a priest. Right. That's just no the matter what religion you are or anything like that, as That's long your as we call. all take care of each other. Exactly. Um, but it was so strong, this call towards religion, my whole life, even when I didn't know what it was, um, that I just wound up down that path, studying mm -hmm. those strange things. Um, there is a story, I watched someone get possessed once. And this was when I had stuffed down my gifts because they were getting spooky and I was weird and it was hard enough that the school board was calling my mom saying, because they tested me, get her out of the public school. We don't know what to do with her. Um, thank you. That was great. It was great for my self-esteem or let us skip her, her five grades. No, they, 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 they thought I need, I was special needs. They thought because I didn't know the difference between uh, opposites. I don't think they, right. what's the difference, but what's the opposite of the floor, Christina? I don't know. The ceiling, because it's the farthest away. Okay, lady, my, and I said this, I was five, my house is a lot farther away from that floor than that ceiling. <laughs> and they took my IQ and then they called my mom and said, get her out of public school. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so I was already weird and I didn't want to be such I think everybody in either. the paranormal is weird. Well, we have to I'm be weird. Know you that. know, we didn't become plumbers. No, we didn't. We don't collect more. stamps. We go into rotten, <laughs> rotten mold infested houses in the dark and we're yeah. like, yes. I mean, it's sick. 
Um, <laughs> but I had stuffed down those gifts and I forgot I had them. I literally blocked them out. And uh, I was at a church, a Unitarian Universalist. I was very, um, and I still am very open to different ideas at the time. And there was a gentleman who used to have a meditation group. And in this meditation group was a woman named Eva, mm -hmm. of all things. I thought she had a speech impediment, but it turns out she was from Western Massachusetts. But anyway, um, after I went to school in Boston, I realized it. So, <laughs> sorry, Eva. Um, for some reason, I hated this woman. Now, when I have a visceral reaction of, I want to tear your liver out, it's usually because the person has something else to them because it's very hard for me to not like people. I can feel your trauma. I right. can literally feel rip the it emotion. from you. Feel the emotion. Exactly. Right. Um, so um, I didn't like her. I didn't know why. She used to give me a headache. She smelled funny. Mm. Yeah. And in this meditation group, I learned that they would turn the Enya on. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I like Enya. Stop. I like Enya, stop. too. That's stop. Right. Stop. <laughs> but I know it sounds weird, I but also, I like it. I also like Metallica. So, so anyway, do I. Enya yeah. was there. <laughs> I was just listening to it. Don't look at my Spotify. But anyway, <laughs> Anya was there. Um, and they turn off the lights. They light a candle. And I started realizing I can see what these people are seeing. And I can see the dead people next to them. I didn't know the host had a son who was murdered. Mm. But I saw this young man sitting behind him playing with his hair. And then the lights came on. And he's like, something was playing with my hair. And it was David. And I'm thinking, who's David? So, and he explained later. So I'm realizing, oh my dear God, not something else. I mean, I, I can see dead people. And not only that, but if I focused, I could run an image through everybody's head. So I'm, I'm experimenting on these poor people. Um, anyway, one night, I opened my eyes in the middle of the meditation half hour, and Eva is sitting in a chair and there is something black, two black figures. One has its hands on her shoulders, and the other is pushing itself into her mouth. Shadow-like people? It look, well, I wasn't seeing it. I was seeing it. In mental. Oh, okay, got it. And um, it was pushed, and her face is contorting, and I'm watching her, and I didn't know what to do. It wasn't religious. Um, and so I threw my will at her. That is the only way I can explain it. I threw my will at her in push. And um, the one entity behind her looked at me and pointed at me, and the other disappeared. But she kept doing this, and I wanted to slap her because I hated her so much, and I don't know why. Wow. Um, but anyway... <laughs> She, she, they turn on the light, she's still doing this, and she, they go around and they would say, what did you see? And they got to Eva, and now I have a pounding migraine. I'm sweating. It was the most horrible thing I had ever had to do in my 22 years of life. And Eva's like, <laughs> says literally, there was this beautiful angel of light, and he said he wanted to come to me, and I said yes. And he was coming inside of me. And I, I did Lord. this. <laughs> you need a visual for this. Here's little 22-year-old me. And I go, I hate you. <laughs> and I'd hate to go to get confession from you. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes. don't. Um, but I screamed it. And everyone in the room defended me. They're like, oh, it's a past life thing. It's this, Eva, don't get upset. But the horrible thing is when I said that, she looked me in the eye and she goes, and she said it just like this, but I like you. You know what? You know what? That's the same thing that I was telling you about the one that smelled like rubber, right? Yep. He put his hand in my shoulder. He goes, we like you. Yeah. And I said, dear Lord in heaven, I said, okay, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> So, that's odd. That's odd, man. Yeah, that's but after thing. that, I, I didn't go back, but Eva didn't come back either. It yeah. was weird. We both kind of went, like now, what Einstein's paradox. Now, we, you have some evidence for us. Yes, I do. Uh, we are going to, please take us into it, and Pat, if you can help us out. Real quick, I know we're on a time constraint. Um, I was well, with some friends in Texas, and I won't say where. 
Um, but the locals, like every place in Texas, had stories about, you know, the devil worshipers. Um, but in this one area, next to a child's aquatic park, I mean, you couldn't get more white middle class than this area. There were these three foot stones in an arc with three in the center. And there was all this nonsense satanic writing, but up on the stone, I recognized Greek and it was chiseled in. And uh, the big stone had been burned with an accelerant, mm -hmm. clearly, many times. And I'm like, this is the weirdest place I've ever been. But as it was three of us, me and two boys, you need to know that, and I had been ordained a priest exactly seven days before. And as I was walking in, my protection, which is, <laughs> which is very forceful, pushed me and said, you can't, you can't go in. Um, so I didn't enter. Mm -hmm. And you would walk in the center of this thing and with the stones this high and the compass is spinning hmm. and you walk outside and it stops. There had been murders and suicides in the houses nearby mm -hmm. and everyone who tried to buy this little patch of land with this thing was on would either die or the contract would fall through or something weird like that. And so Dr. Kennedy was doing an EVP session in this space, and he's the person you'll hear speak first. And this is part one of this EVP. I don't know how I am, Hello, my name's Chuck. I wish you no harm. I just talked to dead people. Can you talk to me? Can you tell me your name? I'm sorry, I don't know your name. I wish I did. I hate talking to spirits Make and I don't know their leave. name. But talk Make to me. Make the girl leave. That's what it said. Now, what happened to you, you here? hear that background stuff? All right. We stripped that away. Every time you go to that location, you get what I'm about to play for you. And it was through the entirety of the video. And we were there for 45 minutes. And I'll tell you, it's a combination of Latin and now that we don't know what Akkadian or, or Babylonian sounds like, but some of the words are kind of, it's a syllabic language. So I'll play this for you. This was interesting too. Forty-five minutes of it. They went back a year later and they got it again. And you hear the horns. Now someone actually asked me, why don't you go back and do something about that place? And I was like, fuck you, I'm not going back there. So, it's, it's, it's not my circus, those aren't my monkeys. <laughs> so what's interesting about what you're saying and what she's playing, recently, me and Steve, we do our little commercials for our tours and everything like that. And we were going to do a thing called Monk's Tour, uh, which is uh, we were going to go to a place called St. James Cemetery, otherwise known as Monk's Castle. I don't know if anybody knows that. So the minute that we are doing this commercial, because we review everything that we do before we decide to take it to, to, to edit. So we're looking at this, and this is two minutes right afterwards. Mm -hmm. That same sound that she has on hers, and we'd be more than happy to put it up for everybody, is exactly on ours. And it was taken at um, Mount Olivet Cemetery on the south side of Chicago. Right. So we're sitting there, and I'm trying to say, oh, you're all welcome to come out for Monk's tour and blah, 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 and you have such and such date. And then we play it back, and we're all like, what the f is that? And then we had right. that at Maru House. Remember? Yeah. We were going live. Other people have yeah. had it, and too. Similar in the beginning. Yeah. music and well, chanting. What is, what is that exactly? It like, beats the hell it's out a of demon. me. It's Satan, dude. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Honestly, you know, I think that, I think, I don't know. Like, is it you don't know. You don't I know what it is. Know. But what it is, is it's definitely something that shouldn't be freaking there. Yeah, right. that, I'll tell you that. that's the key. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, EVPs, it, 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 people can telepathically project images on photographs and things. I don't know. Can, can I, but I yeah. will not go back. I believe you. You mentioned I, about um, being able to put a thought in people's minds. Mm -hmm. um, 
can an investigator unknowingly project a thought onto an EVP reporter? I believe that. I believe the same with psychic medium readings. I mean, you can't rule out telepathy unless you do what I do, which is not have the person near me when I do the reading. Say, give me a photo, I sit down, I do the reading, and just write everything out, and then I sit with you for an hour and just kind of go through things. Because people have this tendency to be like, oh my God, yes, guess what? Because one time, and I'm like, stop! I can cold read you very easily. Don't do that, but they can't help it. So I do the reading ahead of time. I scan the page. I send it to them, and I'm like, okay, now you can ask questions. Because otherwise, how do you know what I'm saying is real? Okay. Uh, Michelle, did you have anything? No, not at the moment. Not at the moment. I must say, Michelle, you did a great job on that hey, poem, my dear. Thank you. That was nice. Everybody liked thank that you. poem that Michelle did. Thank you, thank you. All right, well, this is going to be ending our end of our podcast. I have Steve, one more you, question, oh, my though. God, do you? Yeah. Because if Lord. someone wanted to dive down the rabbit hole of demonology, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where, 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 where should I start? Like, <laughs> Well, should, I, yeah. I, I have that course. Email me, bishoprake at gmail.com. It costs money. The bibliography is 40 pages long, and you'll get things like, you know, magic and history. The elucidation of necromancy by Peter of Abano and, and all those really cool manuscripts. And I go through it from Babylon through, um, and every penny goes to our LGBTQ activism in Africa, to uh, the orphanage. I don't keep a thing, so um, yeah, email me because the, um, the website's going back up because I want to offer this. Um, you'll get to the end of it and you'll realize a lot of stuff you read is just nonsense. Um, you really need to, to see the cool stuff. All right, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, live audience at Dark Matters, I want to thank you very much for coming out and listening to us tonight. Yeah, thank you. You can listen to The Paranormal Guys on all the regular outlets like Spotify, Anchor FM. We also, under Graveside Paranormal, which is our parent company, right. you can go to our YouTube channel. You can see all the documentaries that we've done, all the other uh, podcasts that we've done throughout the time. Uh, Steve, you got anything left to say, my friend? Uh, no. I'm going to learn a lot about demons, though, I think. Oh, you are? Yeah. Michelle, you got anything? <laughs> no, nope, all good. And Christina, Archbishop Christina, I want to thank you very, very much. Thank you. And once thank again, you. everybody, as usual, boys and girls, boo. Boo. <laughs> <laughs>